Hello, welcome to Studio Pixel. Today we are going to discuss about another nonlinear deformer that is squash. To give you an example of uh, how the nonlinear squash actually works to an object, I just took a polygonal sphere in my viewport and by selecting this, I haven't changed uh, uh, anything the default of this uh, parameters just to increase my radius to bit up. That's it, you can scale it up also. Okay, now just by selecting the object, uh, go to the squash option box. Now you can find this nonlinear uh, menu from the create deformers nonlinear. These are the uh, different kind of nonlinear deformers. You can tear off this uh, from here, tear up this uh, menu. Okay, by selecting this and go to squash option box. I'm just leaving the uh, options by in the default values. Go to edit and reset settings and hit create. Okay, immediately you can see there is no effects has been shown as usual. Uh, if you have seen, uh, if you have gone through the older deformers that I have uh, uh, given examples on the previous chapters. If you hit 4, you can see the uh, squash handle has been created. See, squash 1 handle and under the inputs, you can have the those options. So, you can have those options that we have already seen in the option box. You can find them over here. Okay, so first start with uh, the factor the option, which is the most important one because uh, this is a, by default value is zero, and if you increase, if you don't increase the factor value to up or down, you cannot see any kind of changes. So, <clears throat> what does the factor actually do? Factor is actually the one which is responsible for uh, for making this object a squash. Now, using this squash uh, deformer is really really helpful for squash and stretch any kind of object like. Uh, like an like a ball or maybe a cylinder or whatever you want because if you increase the factor you can see immediately it's uh, stretching the volume of your object you know it generally happens when we stretch uh, in two sides here in the up and downwards it's automatically calculates how the uh, volume will maintain of your object because as, as we stretch these those areas ups and downs the sidewise area should be shrink down so that factors actually in calculated in the squash deformer which is very very useful for uh, for any kind of you know stretch and squash uh, thing so <clears throat> if I decrease the value you can see the same ways it also maintaining the volume of your object by you know, spreading out the middle part of your object so that's how you can easily you know get a squash and stretch effect to your to your model okay now expansion is a is very important one because if you decrease the expansion uh, expand value to zero that means your volume is not going to you know maintaining you can see my I'm st stretching out uh, my model but it has no effect on the other axis of the, of, of the object so th that means the expand value is very very important if you really want that object to be as a squeeze squash sorry squash and stretch and also maintaining the you know the volume of your object so these two comes uh, comes to play together should be uh, if you really want them to you know uh, maintaining the volume okay I'm just uh, taking it to one fine and putting back okay just leaving that factor value to a negative one because that will help us to show what are the smart uh, start smoothness and what is uh, end smoothness is now what is the start smoothness and end smoothness start smoothness if you increase the value of start smoothness you can see that smoothness that is that is actually maintaining that that particular you know, volume is getting linear and if you decrease the smoothness it's actually been curved up and create that particular uh, shape according to your object now if you hit end smoothness 
it also create on the upper side of the object so my start point is around over here and my end point is around over here so when I'm increasing my star smoothness it's actually uh, creating on the base of the object and when I'm decreasing sorry increasing my end smoothness it's actually been uh, created so you can see it's a linear kind of a uh, movement so the start smoothness and end smoothness and if I'm increasing the value those values are actually been you know linear down and my object is been uh, not maintaining that particular volume in a very curvy way so that we have to look after according to our need because this is absolutely uh, important that how you are uh, how you really want to uh, act uh, how you really want to, to act your model I mean sorry not model but uh, but object uh, definitely the 3d object that you are using so just leaving it and a low bound and high bound I've already discussed about these options and also the envelope on the previous chapters of the deformers I'm just going through it again okay so what is the low bound uh, considering this is the middle point if you hit the low bound to a value of zero you can see that you can see this is the middle point of, of the object uh, sorry the uh, squash handle and as I am uh, hitting my low bound value to zero there is no effect on the lower portion of that particular object or the 3d model you are actually using the same case is actually with the high bound also because if I am making my high bound to a, a great amount of uh, uh, to zero and uh, that means the upper portion of the object has no effect for uh, for you know, uh, uh, the squash handle so that's the factors and envelope is the one which I have uh, if I hit zero it means it don't affect any kind of a op I mean any kind of a squash effect on on your object it is something like that there is no effect uh, there is no squ uh, squash has been uh, put onto this model at all so that is the envelopes the overall you know the effect of your uh, squash handle or any kind of deform because this this uh, three options like envelope low bound and high bound these are absolutely common options for the nonlinear deformers also so <clears throat> Uh, if I increase the factor, sorry, and you can see it's a, it's a kind of a, I have increased my factor uh, with the expand value of 1 and also the high bound to be make it 0 and you can see that uh, your object has been uh, perfectly, you know, kind of shape of a, of a you know, UFO kind of a, uh, UFO kind of an object. So, this these uh, nonlinear deformers are really helpful for not only for the animations but also definitely for for the modeling purpose also. But I strongly recommend that if you are using your model as a, a sorry if you are going to use this as a model, then you definitely uh, delete your history or duplicate that because otherwise, uh, as these are nonlinear that I have already. Uh, told you before on this main flare and sign also that these have no dependency nodes on no, almost no no dependency on your on your base model so if I in, rotate this value you can see that my uh, models are not dependent on other on the base models and the uh, effect of your uh, squash uh, handle is not directly dependent on on that particular model that's how we can we can even change uh, the the polysphere segments number of segments also afterwards I am using my you know, uh, squash handle deformers but if I duplicate this without any any kind of input node then you can see that uh, I can easily use this as a as a single model because there is no uh, connection left with that so uh, <clears throat> That's how we can use this uh, as a as a squash. Uh, sorry, uh, this squash uh, deformers. Uh, hope you understand this. All the uh, options has been covered. So uh, thank you very much, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also f f follow us on Twitter and like our Facebook page. Thank you very much.